What's happening guys? It's Shane here. So we did it. We hit 100k subscribers. I didn't post the video very fast because I was doing my 30 day challenge. Sorry about that. I thought I would get it out faster, but I got super busy. But today we are going to be doing a Q&A and you guys left some amazing questions. And by the way, I'm guessing this is probably the first video as long as I get it up on time uh, in the new set. Let me know how you guys like it. It's not totally done yet, but uh, yeah, I'm still going to be doing some of the videos where my back's against the wall and it's just like, you know, gray paper. You guys seem to like those, but I kind of wanted to mix it up a little bit and uh, just have like a unique set. So let me know if you guys like it and uh, if you have any suggestions on what I should do with it. But anyways, thank you guys so much for 100k subscribers. It has been an awesome journey. 2020 has been super tough, but this was definitely the best part about 2020 is just being able to post these videos, help you guys out and grow the channel. I don't want to get all mushy with it or anything like that, but I really do appreciate the support. Thank you guys so much. Um, it means a lot to me. Yeah. So um, anyways, let's jump right into it. I won't be able to respond to all of the comments. So basically the people who commented, uh, you know, relatively quickly after I posted it, uh, and then the ones that got a lot of upvotes, those are the ones that I'm going to be responding to. The last video just went on way too long. Um, so I'm going to try to keep this one a little shorter. All right. So Eric says, wish I found you five years ago, but after getting a degree in job market uh, that does not pay very well, what are some jobs that pay well that a person with a nutrition science degree could apply for? Oh man, that's a really tough one uh, that would require an entire video on its own. But, you know, basically just think about the things that you enjoy doing. Think about the things that you're passionate about. Why did you go for nutrition science in the first place? There's probably some careers out there that are going to align with that. Maybe you need to go back to school, uh, get into healthcare, for instance, if that's kind of more of the reason that you got into it in the first place. But there are a lot of careers out there that basically just require you to have a college degree and it doesn't really matter which one you got. You might want to look into government jobs, for instance. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a tough question to answer without any further information. Alex says, should I destroy or tap the like button? Choose wisely. Well, Alex, there's basically uh, two different schools of thought on this. Uh, a lot of people think that you should absolutely just demolish, just destroy the like button every single time you see it. Um, I would say that the majority of YouTubers are on that side of thinking. And then there's a small minority of people, which I'm on the side of, which think that you should kind of gently tap the like button or caress it. Just very, be gentle with it, you know? It just gets destroyed all the time. Its entire existence, it's been getting just demolished. And I'm more of a pacifist, and I think that you should just be more gentle with it. And uh, yeah, that's that's my way of thinking. But whatever side you're on, I think that you should definitely click the like button on every video, especially my videos, because it really helps out with the algorithm. James says, uh, what famous people have you met so far? So um, I wouldn't say that I've ever met anybody that's famous um, as in like, you know, like shook their hand or anything like that I guess the most famous person I've ever seen um, or been right next to I, I was right next to somebody who was kind of a little bit famous here on YouTube in 2015 I was at a club in Las Vegas it was excess and I was walking in the door like after you get past the you know, the security guard and everything and you're actually going into the club and there was somebody just standing in the doorway like this, okay? They were standing there like this. I, I, how do I even do it? Um, like with their legs spread apart and like this, and just like looking at everybody in the club. And it just seemed like a little overly dramatic and it made me pause for a moment and I'm like, who the heck is that? <laughs> And uh, also I was trying to go through the door and they were in the way. And uh, this person was really tall and they were blonde. And when they turned uh, and when I went past them, I noticed that it was Logan Paul. So I did step right past Logan Paul. So I guess that's the most famous person I met. Um, so I don't know if he counts as a famous person or not. He's YouTube famous. I don't remember says, when do we get more story times? Have you made or will you make history videos because you love 
history. So more story times are definitely on the way. I've uh, got some great stories, especially the Las Vegas stories. I think I'm gonna have to call that the Las Vegas Chronicles because they're, I mean, that is just a really interesting city. A lot, of, a lot of crazy stuff happens in Las Vegas. Fantastic Las Vegas. Before Las Vegas, I lived in Kansas where pretty much nothing ever happens. And then I moved there and it's just like, there's something to do all the time. So it was definitely an interesting time in my life. Uh, history videos. So the way the YouTube algorithm works is if I just started randomly making history videos, 99% of my audience would not be interested in them and they just wouldn't promote them. So when you get big enough on YouTube, you can make pretty much any type of uh, video and it doesn't matter. You know, you see Jenna Marbles sometimes and she'll make videos like my dog pooped and it's just a picture of the dog or something like that, or walking my dog, right? And they get 10 million views. So when you get big enough on YouTube, it really doesn't matter. But at this point, I'm basically, you know, you guys probably think I'm like, oh, I'm a big YouTuber now, 100,000. Uh, I'm basically like a tadpole, maybe, um, a minnow. Yeah, let's let's go with that. Maybe maybe a krill, okay? Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm still a very small fish on YouTube, so the algorithm would not be kind to me uh, if I posted videos about history. But I do try to integrate history into my videos sometimes. I try to use analogies uh, to history and that sort of thing. So, and I'm gonna try to do that more in the future as well. Slinny24, can you include timestamps? I'm sure many people would agree. Yeah, okay, so I'm probably gonna start doing timestamps here pretty soon. Um, I just didn't, I don't have time to do them on 30 day challenges and stuff. And to be honest, I kind of burned myself out a little bit uh, working too hard on this channel. So I am probably gonna take a little break towards the beginning of the year. But when I come back, uh, I'm probably going to start doing timestamps here pretty soon, okay? So I might even integrate them into the video where I put them at the beginning because I've seen a few YouTubers do that. So yes, I'll be doing timestamps soon. Thank you. <laughs> Nicholas asks, which career would you pursue now if you already had a billion dollars saved and could do whatever you want to? That's a really tough question, uh, Nicholas. I would probably be doing something like what I'm doing right now, actually. Uh, I really like healthcare for one, and I also like making videos. I like you know, film, filmography. So I'd be doing something very similar. I would probably be doing more on the side of uh, filmography though. So maybe a director, I guess. Uh, I would kind of like to make documentaries someday. And I know that's really ironic because I still barely know how to use the camera. For the longest time, I didn't know at all how to use a camera and I was just really bad at it. So I know that's a little bit ironic, but I, I liked making videos. For the longest time, I mostly just liked watching movies and watching documentaries and, and films and different shows and stuff. But then eventually I actually got into the movie making process and I'm, uh, I'm really enjoying that as well. So uh, yeah, I'll go with that. Zabachi asks, I think that we can all agree that the American public education system is severely flawed if you had the ability to reform it, what type of policies would you enact? So I'm assuming you're talking about uh, the college uh, degree system, not the, uh, you know, under like high school and all that sort of thing. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about that since my channel is about college degrees mostly and careers. So yeah, I would agree. It's, it's, it is severely flawed. Um, you know, there's colleges that in their endowment, they have enough money to pay their employees and pay the tuition of all of the students for nearly a hundred years, right? So they've got enough money in their endowment from what they're charging people to go to colleges to pay their employees and operate and pay the tuition of the students for about a hundred years, right? So it's just totally getting out of control, these prices that uh, colleges are charging. And you know, I've talked about that a lot in other videos. It's, it's ridiculous at this point. I don't know exactly how to fix it. I have heard several theories. I'll probably end up making a video on a couple of the different theories that I think are pretty good, but you know, one of them would be what's known as an ISA. ISA stands for an income share agreement and essentially without going into too many details, it's a way for the university to have some skin in the game. So right now as a student, if you go to university and you take out loans, you are basically taking on all of the risk. If things don't turn out well for you, you still have to pay back those loans 
and in many cases you can't declare bankruptcy like you can with other types of loans. So you are taking on a huge amount of risk and the college is essentially taking on like zero risk, right? And they're getting fabulously rich from it because it's basically like a business at this point. So what an ISA does is it's basically an agreement between you and the college that if you aren't successful with the degree that you get, if you aren't able to get a job in that particular field, for instance, then you don't have to pay them back until you're able to get a job in that particular subject that you're studying. And then once you get a job in that subject, then you have to pay a certain percentage of whatever you're making every month. So it's kind of a win-win situation and it incentivizes colleges to make sure that you have the skills as well as the help and the infrastructure for you to get a job after you graduate in whatever you're trying to study. So it does sound really good, at least in theory. There's a couple other solutions out there that um, I'll probably end up making a video about um, that would probably be quite a bit better than what we're doing right now. Not a lot of colleges offer ISAs at this point. It's pretty rare, but um, you know, maybe it would be something that would be more standard in the future. People should maybe just only go to the colleges that offer those, for instance. But yeah, there's also some other solutions that people have talked about. Um, you know, I don't know how to solve the problem. It's a big problem. I'm not 100% sure how it can be solved, but I think there are some things that we can discuss and figure out a way forward. Sia Prasad, uh, do you regret your master's and PhD? I got a PharmD, so it's not technically a PhD. If you could go back in time, would you do it all over again? No, I don't regret getting it. Um, I regret some of the choices that I made in college, of course, which I've already talked about in videos. Some of the things I did, I definitely made some mistakes when I was going to college, but I definitely do not regret getting it. I think it was a good decision for me specifically, um, but that's just because I made sure to do my due diligence and I made sure that it was something that matches my personality really well. So a lot of people that go into it for the wrong reason and it doesn't match them well and they end up miserable. So. I personally think it was a great decision for me, but um, you know that doesn't mean that everybody should go for it. A lot of people ask me in the comments, oh, you went for this, I, I'm gonna do that as well. Please do not copy me, please do not copy me. Everybody's different. That's almost like saying, because of the fact that my favorite ice cream is Cherry Garcia, everybody else should like get Cherry Garcia. That should be everybody's favorite ice cream. No, absolutely not. Everybody's a little bit different and your situations are going to be different so make sure that you um, you know do your due diligence and i've made other videos on how you can do this contact people figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are figure out what you enjoy doing uh, figure out what needs are out there in the market supply and demand and then make a plan and uh, contact people in the careers that you're looking into ask them key questions and figure out if it's the right career for you. Miss Anonymous, can you please do more story times? Yeah, I get this a lot. People really like my story times, apparently. So uh, yeah, I will do more story times. I'm also gonna try to just integrate more stories uh, in general into my videos, uh, just cause I think they are a lot more entertaining when I do that as well. How much free time does being a pharmacist give you to where you can research and post videos so quickly? So, you know, I have quite a bit of free time uh, as a pharmacist. It's uh, one of those jobs where when you're at work, you work really hard. And then when you're off work, you're off. You know, I'm not gonna get called at three o'clock in the morning, you know, called in on my day off or anything like that. It has gotten a little bit, you know, hectic here in 2020, as you can imagine. Um, I've actually, you know, gotten a lot more offers to work extra shifts and stuff. If I wanted to, I could probably work like 70 hours a week. But yeah, uh, in terms of uh, researching and posting videos, you've just basically got to um, create a system. You, you need to be organized, uh, create a system and just make time for the things that are most important. I'd say that's the most important thing is figuring out in business, they call this KPI, key performance indicators, figure out what matters and then mostly just focus on doing that, okay? So a lot of the people, uh, when they try to start a YouTube channel, they're just gonna do all this research on, you. oh, how, what, what's the best this, what's the best that, all this research. The best way to start a YouTube channel and post videos is to start posting videos. Even if you just have a, you know, just a laptop or a cell phone, or even if you don't have a laptop or a cell phone, go to the local library and, and take a video, just uh, uh, the computer. My very first video was just me recording a computer screen. It was me recording a computer screen 
uh, at the local library playing RuneScape, okay? That was my first video ever. This was a while back, okay? But I was recording my computer screen playing RuneScape. That was my first ever video that I uploaded to YouTube, okay? So the most important thing is that you should just start um, doing videos, okay? And that is the KPI for, for YouTube. Just upload more videos. You're gonna get better at it as you go along. I was horrible when I started and you just naturally get better when you just keep practicing. Medium Oscar asks, do you watch anime? Which are your favorite? Yeah, I, I watch it a little bit. I'm not like super into it. Um, Dragon Ball Z, come on, you know, Dragon Ball Z is the best. So yeah, I like, I like Dragon Ball Z. Florent asks, what was your major in college? So I got a farm D. I got a degree, a doctorate of pharmacy. Um, that, that's what I did in college. I did the pre-pharmacy track. So um, in undergrad, I did the accelerated route where I don't actually get a bachelor degree specifically. I did the uh, pre-pharmacy track where I just take enough classes to get approved to pharmacy school. And then I went to an accelerated pharmacy program. So I was able to get my entire degree done, which usually takes around eight years. I was able to do it in around five years and nine months or so, uh, all things being equal. Quentin asks, how uh, will the future salary of a computer science major differentiate than what it is currently? Will it raise or decline? Congrats, bro, you helped me a lot. Thank you, Quentin, appreciate that. Uh, so nobody knows for sure. Um, the future is uncertain, especially, I mean, 2020 came along. Who could have predicted this was going to happen? Uh, so nobody knows for sure, but technology industry in general is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. There's no stopping it. The tech industry was doing amazing before all this happened and they're doing even better now. Okay. So there's no stopping it. AI is coming, um, automation in general streamlining of processes all of these things require technology software hardware all kinds of different technology related fields i think they're going to do great so computer science even if you don't end up working as a coder you're probably going to get into the tech industry and do something there that is going to be you know a skill that not very many people have and there's tons of demand for it so i uh, computer science is a great one in my opinion but who knows i mean Things could happen in the future. Nobody really knows for sure, but I, I think it's relatively safe. Emma asks, opinions on an actual, how meaningful and enjoyable it is. Actual? I think you mean actuary on that, possibly. Uh, you can check out my uh, actuary video that I made. Welcome to my world says, what do you think students need to focus on right now and school is not teaching those skills? Thank you and congratulations for 100K. Thank you so much. Uh, so it kind of depends on what part of school you mean. Um, if you're talking about like uh, middle school, high school, that sort of thing, I think that they should teach just basic personal finance skills. I mean, they teach us all this stuff that we never use after high school. I mean, there's some stuff I learned. I've literally not once in my entire lifetime have I ever used it and uh, you know this is somebody who went to higher education got a doctorate and i still didn't use most of these things uh, that they taught me or a lot of them anyways whereas everybody is going to be paying taxes making a budget balancing books all that sort of thing these are skills that everybody could use they're just really practical skills and uh, they aren't taught in most high schools and middle schools for whatever reason and so you guys end up watching channels like my channel in order to learn them probably after you've made a few mistakes along the way and you know those mistakes could have been avoided if it was just taught in high school super wolf phoenix says will you ever become a full-time youtuber so my answer to that's kind of complicated uh i think there's a lot of advantages of having just a normal job there's a lot of things you don't really have to worry about when you own your own business which YouTube is a business you have to wear a lot of different hats there's just so many things you have to worry about things go wrong all the time I spend pretty much most of my time on YouTube just solving problems whereas with a normal like nine to five job I really wouldn't have to worry about any of that and I just get to enjoy my off time so there's a good chance that I will eventually uh, quit my nine to five job just because of the fact that it doesn't make sense for me to continue working in that 
when you can just make a lot more money with your own business and you can actually scale your business. So with a normal job, maybe if you do an amazing uh, job, you might get a 5% raise at the end of the year, maybe a bonus or something like that. But with a business, you can make 100% more the next year. And then the next year after that, you can make 100% more, right? So you can scale a business whereas you can't really scale a normal nine to five job. So there's positives and negatives to each of them, but yes, I likely will uh, eventually quit uh, my nine to five job in order to do YouTube full time or just business in general full time. Do you guys want me to do YouTube full time? Because I would be able to make a lot more content and the content would be better if I did. So let me know uh, down in the comments below if you want me to. Jansen asks, what other languages can you speak or currently learning? So so unfortunately, I can only speak American, okay? I don't even speak English, okay? I speak a dialect of English known as American, and uh, I'm always extremely impressed by people who know multiple languages, and uh, unfortunately, I just know English. I think it would be cool to learn Spanish or maybe like Russian or something like that. I think those are two languages that uh, would be cool to learn um, and then also uh, useful as well, potentially, in the future. So I do want to learn at least one other language in my lifetime so um, you know yeah it's kind of a thing with Americans a lot of Americans don't know other languages and I, again I think that's a, a bad thing because I meet people from other countries and they're like oh I know three languages oh I know you know two and a half four languages I'm like wow it's super impressive and then I'm just here speaking like half of one language yep. miss echelon what is your dream job not considering education requirements or salary i think that i would just really enjoy making videos so i guess my dream job would be a documentary director so maybe someday i'll move towards becoming a documentary director but to be honest with you i'm very very happy with what i'm doing right now i don't feel like a lot of pressure to to do that i'm super happy with what i'm doing now it's like 9 out of 10, I guess, and uh, documentary director would be 10 out of 10 or 9.5 out of 10. I don't know, something like that. So uh, yeah, maybe someday uh, director. Or I guess you could say just filmmaker because a lot of the time in documentaries, you're the only one talking. You're not really directing other people. You're just interviewing people so i guess filmmaker maria says congratulations on your 100k subs thank you maria appreciate that what are the best online degrees for teaching any tips for someone who'd like to pursue a career in early education question mark love your videos they always make me laugh so i did make a video about what i think about online degrees and this video came out a few months before you know, everything in the world that happened in 2020. Now, obviously, pretty much all degrees at this point are online, even brick and mortar schools are doing everything through Zoom. So things have changed since I made that video. And I've realized that whether I like it or not, I was somewhat pessimistic or negative about online degrees because there are a lot of, in my opinion, bad apples out there for online schools. I'm not going to say scams, but very close to being scams. So I was a little bit negative about them. I did offer a few alternatives for uh, online degrees. If you're in a situation where that's all you can do, you can only do an online degree. Like for instance, your job is offering to pay for your degree. And of course you can only do it online because you can't move anywhere. There are certain online universities that have a much better reputation than others. So I'll probably end up doing another video on that. And in terms of what degree you're gonna get, it really depends on what you want to teach people. So let's say you wanna teach math, you probably wanna get like a mathematics degree or something along those lines. Getting just a pure education degree, and I've talked about this in videos, is not the best idea just because of the fact that you you don't need to have a degree in education in order to become a teacher you can get into teaching with all kinds of different degrees and then you just have to get like a certification of some sort so it really depends on what subject you're wanting to teach uh, again you want to plan ahead and make sure that you do your due diligence there Caesar says I have seen that you put anime references in your videos can you expand upon that 
Uh, yeah, Caesar, I've probably put over 9,000 anime references in my videos up to this point. Flight experience. My dream passion is to become a pilot, but at the same time, I love computer science. So do you recommend getting a computer science degree first, then become a pilot? Uh, congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Appreciate that. So I have a lot of pilots in my family. Uh, my dad was a pilot for a while, so I do know a little bit about this subject. Depending on what company you're working for, some of them are going to want you to have like a college degree before you get into it. There's different training for different types of flying. A lot of people get into it after leaving the military. So they get their training on how to fly in the military and then they become pilots after that, for instance. So there's a lot of different lanes that you can go into in order to become a pilot. Different companies are going to have different standards as well. I would say if that's your passion, you should probably just go for it. And if you're passionate about computer science, that's a great option as well. So either of those are great. It's seems from your avatar like flight experience uh, uh, flying is your true passion so I would probably just become a pilot it, I mean that's just that's just my opinion just based off of uh, what you've told me there Seb asks uh, where did you grow up I'd also like to know your music taste so I kind of grew up all over the place I was born in California lived a lot of time in Nevada and actually moved back and forth a few times I lived a lot of my life in Kansas as well. My dad kind of moved around for different jobs. I lived in Oklahoma for a short period of time. In terms of my music taste, uh, I pretty much listen to everything. Most of the time these days, I only listen to music when I'm working out. Uh, but yeah, I pretty much listen to everything. Um, it just depends on what mood I'm in. Emma says, I feel like we know you, but not enough. Could you talk more about your personal life, like your political beliefs, uh, if you are dating somebody, hobbies, etc.? Yeah, so uh, a lot of people have said that I should uh, open up a little bit more about myself and my videos and stuff like that. And uh, I think that's kind of a good idea. I'm naturally kind of introverted. I don't really like talking about myself, mostly just like talking about whatever subject um, that the video is about. But I'm definitely going to try to do that more in the future in my videos for sure. Big G asks career path you would suggest for a 30 year old. That is such an open ended question. Big G. Uh, I know nothing about you. That's like again saying what ice cream would you suggest like everybody has their favorite flavor of ice cream, right? So your favorite flavor is going to be different than my favorite flavor, right? So uh, there's just so many different career paths uh, out there. Um, it depends on what you like, what you're good at, what your passions are, and all kinds of other different factors. You can check out some of my videos I've made on this, how to choose the perfect degree for you, how to choose the perfect career. Uh, I talk about how you can go about figuring these things out. Aisha says, how do you manage your pharmacy job and YouTube at the same time? So basically uh, just organization and uh, making sure that you only focus on the things that are most important. I think I might go into more detail on that in the future and talk about more of the behind the scenes stuff when it comes to uh, making YouTube videos. I do have a pretty cool system down. I'm a little bit proud of it. Uh, it's, it's just like a system where I figure out what people want me to make videos on and I'm able to make those videos uh, pretty efficiently and quickly as well. Francisco says, congrats on 100K. What's your biggest regret from a financial standpoint? That is a really tough question to ask. Oh man, that's, I mean a really tough question to answer, I should say. I think that everybody makes mistakes and you shouldn't necessarily regret those mistakes because they're all learning experiences. But with that being said, I would say my biggest biggest mistakes have been not taking more risk actually. I'm uh, pretty risk averse and uh, I kind of just didn't think that I had enough confidence in myself to you know start my own business and be successful with that and so I kind of just didn't do it for a long time or I would make excuses or I would start it but I would only just half-heartedly do it. And um, so I think I was a little bit too risk averse in many cases and I should have just, you know, instead of thinking about it, I should have just done it, just jumped into it and learned along the way. Uh, Alu Wagbago um, uh, asks, what's your undergraduate degree in? Sorry if I butchered your name. 
Uh, also, if you were to go back in time to your college days, would you be an engineering, computer science, physics, or a major that is different from your undergrad degree? So my undergraduate degree, I didn't actually get a bachelor's. Instead, I did the fast track because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And so I just did the pre-pharmacy track and I was able to graduate early, uh, graduate, and then go to uh, pharmacy school. And then I also went to a pharmacy school and did the fast track there as well. So I went to an accelerated program. So uh, all in all, I was able to get my doctorate in around five years and nine months, five years and 10 months, somewhere around there, whereas usually it takes around eight years. So it uh, really worked out for me for my specific situation. Um, but, you know, uh, if I were to go back, I would I would have done the exact same thing, basically. I wouldn't have gotten an undergrad degree. I, I would have done the fast track, um, but that's only because I knew exactly what I was getting myself into. I'd done tons of research and I made sure that this was the exact career that I wanted to get into. And I did that uh, at a relatively early age as well. So if you're asking me what major I would pick other than the one I did, so if I couldn't do what I did before uh, and I had to pick a major, I would probably go back and do computer science. Um, I really Really regret not learning more uh, about coding uh, and that sort of thing and I actually had a really cool project planned on this channel it didn't work out because of all the stuff that happened in 2020 but I had a really cool project uh, planned that would have involved me learning um, some Python and then uh, I can't really give any more details but a really cool project plan that was around learning about coding on this channel and hopefully I'll be able to do that one uh, early next year um, and I, I'm really excited about it whenever I'm going to be able to do it. It's going to be awesome. Arjan asks, is business analytics a good degree both on an undergrad and graduate level? Uh, congrats on getting 100k subs. You earned it. Thank you Arjan. I appreciate that. So business analytics or also known as business analysis, um, sometimes uh, quantitative business analysis and undergrad. Uh, that is definitely a good uh, undergraduate degree. Uh, in terms of getting a graduate degree, it really depends on what career path you're going down. So this is the thing about getting graduate degrees and it's why I suggest that people kind of secure the bag, so to speak, with their undergrad degree unless they know exactly what they're doing, right? So if you've got a great plan and you're 100% sure you know exactly what you're doing, that's awesome you know, get your master's or your doctorate if that's what you're going for and you know you need to get that in order to get into the career. But if otherwise, I would say just get the bachelor's degree, make sure that you can get a job with just your bachelor's degree and then uh, at that point, once you get that, then you'll have the option of getting a master's, going back to school or starting your career. You've got that option and that's the key point is it's a choice for you. It's an option for you, not something that you have to do because so many people find themselves in a situation where they get a degree and then they have to go back to school and get a master's or a doctorate in order to get a job and we've already talked about how expensive that can be. Malavika asks, why did you choose to pursue a career in farm? Do you regret it or do you think it's actually worth it? So uh, I had some very specific reasons why I went into pharmacy and I've talked about them in other videos. One of the main reasons why I decided to go into pharmacy is because my dad had some really serious health issues when I was young. So he ended up having a couple different strokes when I was very young. And before that, I was sort of a little bit of a hippie, I guess, because both of my parents are kind of hippies, I guess. You know, they believe in like natural medicine, especially my mom, uh, really into like herbal medicine, natural medicine, not taking medications and all that sort of thing. So I guess you could say I was kind of anti-medication. Uh, when I was younger and then, and I'm still somewhat anti-medication. I think there's some that are totally over prescribed, but um, basically what happened is it was a situation where if this medication didn't exist, my dad would be dead 100%. And because of the fact that this medication exists, my dad got to live an extra 10, 15 years. He's still alive right now. So that's amazing. I mean, that's basically a miracle. That's an extra 10 or 15 years of life that he wouldn't have gotten to live if it wasn't for the existence of this medication. I mean, that is just totally black and white to me. 
it was amazing. And when I realized that, it started me uh, off on a path of just being fascinated with pharmacology in general and how this works, you know, how the drug interacts with the body, how the body interacts with the drug. So that's kind of how I started off getting interested in um, pharmacy and I guess medical careers in general, um, but specifically pharmacy. And so that's, that's kind of a, a shortened version, but uh, basically I decided that it was the right career for me. I really did my due diligence. I talked to people, I did tons Tons of research and I knew it was the right career for me and so I went for it and no I don't regret it um, I think a lot of people do regret going into pharmacy for certain reasons because a lot of the time they go into it because their parents told them to or they go into it because it makes a lot of money and that's the only reason they're getting into it um, but uh, for me that was never my reason of course the money is really nice you do make quite a bit of money as a pharmacist it's it's a, a well-paying job but that was never my main reason for getting into it Isabel says what career would you recommend if I don't know what career fits me basically Isabel uh, that is a super open-ended uh, <laughs> question I would need a lot more information again check out some of my videos uh, where I talk about you know the perfect college degree for you or Ica guy um, videos like that that will help you figure out what your strengths are what your passions are what needs there are in the world and all that sort of thing Mike asks what do you like and dislike about being a pharmacist thanks for the videos and congrats on 100k so um, I get uh, questions like this quite a bit uh, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is making a separate channel like a second channel where I answer questions like that uh, make videos about that because if I posted a video about that on this channel it's it would just flop okay I, I know how the YouTube algorithm works only a small percentage of you guys are interested in hearing about that and so I'll probably end up making a second channel where I talk about stuff like that uh, for people who are really interested in it because uh, it just simply would not do very well if I posted it on this channel because um, it's uh, very specific and um, you know not very many people would be interested in it welcome to my world says what do you think students need to focus on right now and school is not teaching those skills uh, thank you and congratulations for 100k so basically uh, you know middle school high school personal finance skills very important there, there's a lot more but yeah personal finance skills would be extremely important to learn and then in terms of college uh, just focus more on the actual skills that you're going to be needing when you start working so focus more on getting real life work experience I think they should be doing a lot more internships and that sort of thing because there's a lot of things that you learn that are some of them are tangible like like hard skills but there's also a lot of soft skills and just intangible skills that you learn when you get real work experience right so getting a job doing internships that sort of thing very very important when it comes to college David asks what does a day in the life as a pharmacist youtuber look like for you and how has it changed throughout quarantine what are some ideas that uh, you have for the future direction of your channel David you ask the best questions man you really do thank you for all your great questions appreciate you so um, day in the life <laughs> Uh, video for a pharmacist slash youtuber pretty boring right now 2020 um, I just pretty much just like worked the whole time relatively boring um, maybe after all this stuff is over I'll do like a day in the life type video uh, and like po maybe post it on my other channel or something like that <clears throat> which I haven't made another channel, but the other channel that I might make for these sorts of videos. So it's interesting throughout this whole process um, in terms of my actual work, it got super busy and then it got super slow depending on what time period we were in. So um, yeah, it's kind of uh, been a little bit of both. And then in terms of the ideas for the future direction of the channel, um, basically just more of the same thing i'm going to be talking about personal finance college degrees careers opportunities uh investing all that sort of thing different uh you know just different personal finance stuff for the most part i have a list of different video suggestions when you guys leave video suggestions i you know take a screenshot and i put them in a particular file a particular folder and uh, i have a list of different video suggestions it's probably well over a thousand videos by now there's no way i'm ever going to be able to get to all of them and i also have to be somewhat selective about which ones i do so i try to make videos that include you know multiple degrees and then i talk about multiple ones but i'm trying to come up with some solutions in the near future uh, second channel is going to be one of them most likely where I post videos 
on there. And then I'm also looking into uh, YouTube Shorts, making some videos on YouTube Shorts, and then maybe even TikTok, because there's some types of videos where the subject is extremely niche and not very many people would be interested in seeing it. But at the same time, it's a you know it's very valuable and so i can't spend 10 hours making a youtube video for that but maybe i could spend you know 30 minutes making a tiktok video instead and then that way i could make you know, like 10 videos in the same amount of time 10 or 20 videos so i'm looking into different alternatives uh just to try to get to all those questions that you guys ask uh, i'm gonna do my best okay but uh yeah maybe doing a tiktok or something along those lines janae asks is phd and masters in finance uh in usa a good option for green card and job salary perspective love from india and by the way, congratulations. Thank you so much, Janae, I appreciate it. Um, I'm not an expert on uh, the subject of uh, immigrating here to the US. I do have one friend, a uh, very close friend, um, kind of like a, a mentor, fellow pharmacist of mine. Um, he started in India, he moved to Canada, and then from Canada, he immigrated here to the US. So I know that's like a really common way of doing it because it's easier to get into Canada and then from Canada, go to the US. But again, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not an expert on that sort of thing. And in terms of uh, degrees that you would get, I, I, I'm also, I, I, I don't know. I, I apologize, but I, I really don't know anything about that. My best advice would just be go into something where there's a lot of demand, I'd say. So there's a lot of need for people who have those skills. You'd probably want to pursue something like that. Jeremy says, uh, how hard is it to find jobs right out of undergrad with a physics degree? Is it better to just go for an engineering degree? Yeah, Jeremy, it can be a little bit difficult to find jobs with a physics degree, even though it's pretty well respected uh, and the skills you learn are tough. Like not everybody can get a physics degree, very tough. I probably wouldn't be able to do it myself, right? So the skills you learn are valuable, it's well respected, but it's just a little bit it's hard to convince people that the skills you learn with a physics degree are going to translate to real life a little bit too theoretical in some ways so it can be a little bit hard sometimes there are a lot of businesses uh, out there that have the philosophy of just hiring the smartest people and they know that people who graduate with you know, physics degrees are very smart and very hard working and so they'll hire you for a job that probably has nothing to do with physics and then they'll just decide hey i'm gonna you know go ahead and take the time to train them on the exact skills I want them to know, and then just hopefully their raw brain power is gonna help them uh, be successful. Engineering is a little bit more practical. Uh, it's not as theoretical as physics, but so, you know, that might be a good option for you. But again, every person's situation is gonna be different. You can definitely get a job with a physics degree. You just might have to, you know, look around a little bit more and do a little more work, try to get an internship or extra work experience, uh, do networking while you're in college. Blah, blah says, how do you feel about the prospect of government student loans being reduced or vacated oh boy that's a hot button issue right now um i will say that uh you know i try to stay away from politics i try to not give my political opinions on this channel and be as neutral as possible but i will say that uh politicians promise a lot of things very rarely do they actually deliver so you know, we've been hearing a lot about this uh, student loan forgiveness and uh, they um, have not delivered anything yet. So we'll see if they actually do it. I would say if they are going to pay off people's student loans, I, I think the colleges have to bear some of the responsibility of the payment because a lot of these colleges, like I said, have like a hundred years worth of operating expenses, business expense, like paying their, their, their employees, and then a hundred years of just paying for the student's education and their endowment, right? And, and that's all money that they got from their student's tuition for the most part, and then also donations and stuff. But that's just ridiculous. Why would they be able to have 100 years of operating expenses? Why would they need that? that that's totally ridiculous. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of, it's a very complex issue. There's a lot that goes into it, but I really think that the colleges need to step up 
and uh, take some responsibility in this whole situation, this whole student debt situation, because uh, in many ways they ha bear a lot of the blame because they took advantage of a system that was supposed to help people to get their education. Alex asks, do you think an MBA is worth it? So it depends on the situation. In some cases, it absolutely will be worth it. And in some cases, it uh, is not worth it. It really depends on what career you're going for and all kinds of other factors. Uh, generally speaking, it it's, it's gonna be worth it uh, for a good amount of people, I'd say. But it also depends on what college you go to and some other factors because MBA is one of those degrees where it's almost like you can get an MBA in a cracker box. A lot of the time it's like tacked on to other careers and stuff like that. So uh, you want to make sure that um, you're going to like a you know good reputable college and and all those sorts of things, which I can't get into because this video is already getting way too long. <laughs> Okay, Noriel left a very long comment. I'm gonna try to get through this super fast. I'm sorry, I cannot give you a detailed answer on these, Noriel. So, uh, is it uh, right to enter computer science when I was never passionate about it? No, don't, don't do something you're not passionate about. If you don't like it, don't do it. Uh, do the thing you're more interested in. How, how can I manage my fear of scholarships where I am scared of being alone abroad and choosing a major among millions from different universities? I, I don't even know what to say there, Nuriel. Um, you know, try to try to get out of your comfort zone. You'll notice that uh, when you get out of your comfort zone with things that you fear doing, um, you're probably going to get the most out of those things. So sometimes actually what you fear doing is the thing that you should do. Uh, what activities and courses that are most important that we have uh, to take during college life? In terms of just practically speaking, uh, in terms of what's most important, I would say skills and work experience. Those two things are the most important thing. They override everything else. Depending on what career path you're going down, third one that's really important is networking, right? So skills, work experience, and networking. Those are kind of like the holy trinity uh, of what's important, but you know, it depends on what you're going for. So for instance, if you are trying to get into medical school, then grades becomes extremely important and how involved you are. So it, it, it's, it's a case by case basis, basically. Do you recommend getting into something that will pay a lot or something you have passion for? Uh, definitely do the thing that you have passion for. You need to identify uh, what type of passion it is. So is it a hobby? Is it something you wanna do for a living? And then if so, if you wanna do it for a living, um, is it something that is practical to do with a college degree or is it something that you maybe want to do on your own, right? Start your own business, something along those lines, right? Because there's a lot of college degrees that when you get the, uh, the major, when you go into the major, you get the degree, it's not going to help you do that thing professionally. So uh, in my opinion, that's not going to be worth going $40,000 in debt for. Thank you for uh, replying to each of our comments. Uh, yeah, you got it. Lil Master says, like around how much bag do you make? So, you know, I, I know you've got all these YouTube videos that talk about, you know, how much, how much does this channel make? How much does my business make? How, how much do I make in passive income, right? There's all these videos that talk about that sort of thing. And I did post a poll where I asked people if they want me to make a video like that. And I think the majority of people said that they did. Um, they did actually want me to make a video about that. But a lot of people at the same time also talked about how I don't have to, and it's kind of like my choice. But um, I know that some people you know, the way they do it is a little bit braggadocious. It can come across that way. And, uh, you know, I would never want to do that. And what I realized is this is a year where a lot of people are having financial issues. A lot of people are struggling big time. My brother had to lay off all of his employees, his business, you know, went down the drain, um, you know, just, just to give a personal example, but there's millions of examples out there of things just like that. A lot of people are in pain and they're struggling this year and I did not want to be the person. Um, I thought it would be a little bit tone deaf for me to post a video like that while so many other people are having financial issues. So I basically didn't want to be the person who did that. So I still will probably do it at some point in the future because most of you want me to post a video like that. Um, but I'm hoping I can maybe wait until after all this stuff is over and people kind of go back to normal. Ice, uh, and I'm not gonna say that full name uh, because I'm, I'm not gonna say that full name. Nice try. 
Uh, will you ever branch out and talk about investing and stuff like that? So yeah, I've already talked somewhat about investing on the channel. The videos didn't do nearly as well as like college degree videos and that sort of thing. And that's kind of the nature of the YouTube algorithm. You know, I'll, I make an amazing video on investing. I put so much work into it and then it gets like a thousand views or something like that, uh, or, you know, 10,000 views and then a, a decent video on college degrees get a ton of views. So, you know, once you get big enough, once the channel gets big enough, you can kind of branch out a little bit and talk about different subjects. Uh, but at this point, uh, I kind of try to stick to my niche. So yeah, I will definitely talk more about investing in the future. I think investing is a very important part of personal finance. Adam asks, best computer science degrees, hardest majors, is it worth getting a master's degree or PhD in computer science? Best combination of degrees related to computer science? Uh, you don't have to answer all of them. Um, although I wouldn't complain either. So uh, Adam, I made a video called the best double majors for technology degrees. I suggest you check that one out. Hardest majors, I'm, I think physics probably. Physics, uh, maybe some of the engineering degrees, they're really tough, but I, you know, that's kind of subjective. Is it worth getting a master's degree or a PhD in computer science? Depends on what position, career path you're going for. For most people, it probably wouldn't be worth uh, going for a master's or a PhD, but for some people it would be. Elliot asks, there's a lot of variables to account for, but what would you advise to someone who has a not very in-demand bachelor's degree? Uh, so yeah, I did make a video on that where I talk about what you can do if you got a worthless, so to speak, degree. So basically, uh, there's a lot of things to it, but there, there are quite a few careers out there that only require you to have a college degree. They don't really care what college degree you got, right? So you would wanna look into careers like that. There's a lot of government jobs out there, for instance, that are pretty good along those lines. If you got a degree in something where there's not necessarily a lot of demand, job demand out there, but there's demand in other ways, like for instance, you could start a YouTube channel or some kind of side hustle related uh, to that skill, then that's another direction that you can look in as well. My Doan asks, uh, do students who major in marketing have good career perspective? Yeah, marketing's pretty decent. What do you need to focus on to optimize their chances? So business, again, work experience slash internships, networking, and skills. Those are the three big things that you wanna focus on. Tega Elliott says, is double majoring really hard? What do you think about economics and political science as a double major? Double majoring can be pretty tough. Um, it really depends on what you're double majoring in. It's, it's gonna be harder than just you know one major on its own, but it kinda also depends on how your school structures it. Some schools make it easier to double major. It's like more of a smooth process, whereas others are gonna make it tougher. But uh, yeah, those actually, uh, those do sound like pretty good combinations. Economics and political science, that sounds like a good combo for sure. Imran, what motivated you to start a channel in the first place and why with careers specifically? So uh, Imran, basically what happened is I realized that I wish that there was a resource like the one that I'm providing right now for myself when I was 17 or 18 years old because I went through like a huge process in order to figure out what I wanted to do and it was very stressful and uh, there's a lot of anxiety associated with it and there were pretty much no good resources out there to help me figure out what I wanted to do in life. And so I looked again after I graduated and after I realized, you know, going through the whole system, how much of a, I, I hate to use the S word, but SCAM, a lot of college degrees are in many cases, you know, and I realized that, you know, college degrees can be a great thing for some people in certain situations. Education is amazing. You know, education can change the world. Getting a college degree specifically, that type of education can be a great choice in some situations, but in many cases, it's not the best choice, right? So there's a lot of careers out there if you want to get into getting a college degree is not gonna be the best choice for you. And I just wanted to provide a resource for people out there who were kind of in a similar situation to me where they came from a background where they were pretty poor. You know, I was homeless for a while when I was a kid and then also you know, I lived in like trailer parks and all kinds of things like that. So, you know, I came from a situation where I was very poor um, and I had to be a little bit more practical than the average advice out there uh, people were giving, right? So I can't just go to college, get a degree and 
get even further into debt and become even more poor. It had to be a little bit more practical. So it's a good balance of you know practicality and passion. You always wanna to try to find that balance. You know, I talked about that with Ikigai, for instance. That's a great way to think about it. And so that's what motivated me to start this channel and just start talking about personal finance, uh, career paths, college degrees in general, is I just did not think that there were enough channels out there that were talking about this stuff. And the few channels out there that mentioned it here and there, in my opinion, uh, weren't giving the best advice. Mr. Peep, uh, what are some signs of a degree that will not be future-proof? Oh man, so I made a video uh, called uh, 10, uh, 10 Red Flags for College Degrees or something like that, Top 10 Red, red Flags for College Degrees. And uh, yeah, I talked about all of the, the things that are uh, make something not future-proof or bad in that video. So you should check that video out. In Donasish, sorry if I butchered the name there, uh, says online courses that everyone should take. So by online courses, I'm guessing you mean something outside of college. Uh, so like Skillshare, something along those lines, buying a course in order to learn. So my opinion on online courses, and I know this is kind of a controversial subject right now, there's channels like CoffeeZilla, for instance, that uh, you know talk about a lot of these online scammers who sell $1,997 courses and um, basically rip people off left and right. So my opinion on that whole industry, uh, which is basically just online learning, e-learning, is that right now there are quite a few people out there that are providing bad products. And you look at kind of like how a market develops with a lot of different products and you see that you know, at the very beginning, a lot of the time with markets, the products are bad because there's not enough competition, there's not enough uh, feedback, there's not people uh, being held accountable and all that sort of thing. Um, so right now, in my opinion, about 80% of online courses are either not worth it or they're straight up scams, okay? So I've taken many online courses and I would say probably 70, 80% of them that I've taken were either not worth it, straight up scams, um, and then around like 20%, maybe 20, 30% of the courses um, were worth it or just amazing, right? So uh, that's kind of my opinion on online courses. I do think that the future of education, the future of learning is going to be more uh, decentralized. It's not gonna be just colleges that have like a monopoly on uh, teaching people things. You see that Google is coming out with a program where they teach people how to do certain skills that are in high demand. They've got like certifications coming out. So it's almost like their own little university in some ways. And uh, you see a lot of people popping up and teaching uh, skills as well. So there were several YouTube courses that I took that really helped me grow on YouTube. And I do not think I would have been at the point where I'm at right now without those courses. So without a doubt, they can be worth it in some cases, but you need to be very, very careful because there's a lot of uh, scammers out there. In terms of what courses you should take, uh, uh, come on, I, I, I have no idea. Again, that's such an open-ended question. Um, depends on what you wanna do in life. Kali asks, what is your opinion on a business degree with a business analytics concentration? Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Business analytics is, is really good. Again, for the right person, of course. Reem, congrats Shane. I was just wondering, in terms of furthering my career in psychology, would it be smarter to go for a PsyD or a PhD? So again, that would depend on your personal situation, but just very generally speaking, I've heard better things about going for a PhD than a PsyD in many cases, but you know, I can't speak on it specifically just because again, I, I it depends on the situation, it depends on the career you're going for, et cetera. So I've heard slightly better things about going for a PhD than a PsyD. Janelle asks, best future jobs with incoming automation? Um, again, I would say health careers are pretty safe and um, a lot of technology careers, I think they're gonna do really well. Business is a little bit of a wild card. Some business careers are gonna not do well, and then some are going to you know, really stand the test of time and do extremely well, in my opinion. Uh, I'd say the biggest thing is just focus more on skills than focusing on the job. So if you learn certain skills, that you know are not gonna be able to be automated, like for instance, communication, uh, being able to network with people, leadership, management, 
Um, just business smarts in general, kind of hard to talk about. It's sort of intangible, but just business skills and business smarts in general. These are things that are never going to be able to be automated. Abdullah says, do you recommend getting a master's or a PhD in a STEM related career? So I did make a video about that. Uh, I think it was titled, is a master's degree worth it? Or uh, the other one was my opinion on PhD degrees. And generally speaking, okay, because I'm broadcasting this to a broad audience, generally speaking, uh, PhDs are not worth it, okay? Generally speaking, for the right person, might be the best choice for you, but uh, in terms of your time investment as well as the money investment, uh, most of the time PhDs are not gonna be worth it. And I made an entire video about why I think that. And then generally speaking, masters can sometimes be worth it uh, in terms of your money investment and time investment, right? So for the right person, getting a doctorate or a master's will absolutely be worth it. If you've you know, planned ahead, you've done your due diligence, it can be worth it, absolutely, it was worth it for me. Um, but for the average person, for most people, in my opinion, it's not worth it, uh, especially when it comes to getting a PhD, and especially if you're talking from a personal finance perspective. Tolga, hello, man. Uh, could you talk about online degrees and which ones are worth it, which ones are not worth it? You might remember me. I sometimes show up in your comments as the econ guy that took two gap years uh, planning to have an online MIS degree alongside with the main econ one. So online degrees, very interesting subject that I will be making more videos about in the near future. When it comes to online degrees, it's hard for me to say that taking a degree online, you're gonna be as engaged as if you were doing it in person, especially for certain subjects. So for instance, doing an online lab. I mean, I've done lots of labs. I can't imagine how I would be able to learn anything from doing a lab online when you're just mixing like virtual flasks together, virtual uh, uh, liquids and stuff. I, I do not see how I would be able to learn much of anything from that, but there are certain degrees where I can see it being okay uh, to be done online. And I think a big thing there is less to do with the degree itself and more to do with the school that you go to because there are a lot of pretty scammy, I hate using that word because I don't wanna get sued, <laughs> but uh, scammy uh, for-profit type schools, like profit mills that are online and they charge people way more than what they should and they're not very well respected, a lot of these online schools. So there are a few online schools that are uh, have a better reputation and then a lot of brick and mortar schools, of course, with everything happening in 2020, offer online programs. So um, I did make an entire video about that, but it does need to be updated because of the fact that it, it was made before uh, 2020 happened. Mr. Peep asks, should schools throw away useless college degrees? Why or why not? So this is an interesting question. I don't think they should throw away the degrees. I just think that they should be much more transparent to their students about their chances of getting a job. And I think that they should also be held accountable if their students are not able to get a job or if their students are just in a really bad place, right? So right now the schools pretty much have no skin in the game. They're not held accountable for their students' success. So the student is taking on all of the risk and you can't do a take back, right? You can't like get your money back from school. There is no, there is no return. So it's not like a normal business where if you're not satisfied with the product, you can return it to the business and they'll usually give you your money back. The whole college system is uh, set up to where the schools are just simply not accountable for what's happening to the students and they are just profiting like crazy off of it. So no, I don't believe that schools should throw away useless degrees. I think that they should probably downscale some of the degrees where there's not any demand. And I think it's awesome to be able to take classes in a lot of these degrees. Like I really enjoyed taking classes in history, psychology, sociology, et cetera, but they should be much more open and realistic with their students about their chances of getting a job and keep it a little bit more pragmatic, I guess you could say, kind of just be a little more practical uh, in terms of the student's ability to get a job afterwards 
and ability to pay off the loans that they're taking out. Zayad asks, what are the best remote jobs for teens? Oh man, that's a tough one, Zayad. Uh, I would just say, uh, you know, learning some type of website development would be great. I would say uh, remote jobs, buying and selling stuff online. I did that a lot when I was a teen. Um, yeah, th there's, there's a lot of good ones out there. I think as a teen, you're more focused on side hustles uh, than jobs a lot of the time. So, so yeah, you're probably going to be more focused on that. Suicide says, what was your GPA in school? I honestly don't remember. Um, I think in undergrad I had like a 3.6 or something. Uh, it was, a, I think it was around like 3.5, 3.6, somewhere around there. GPA doesn't really matter much guys, uh, unless you're trying to get into like medical school or something like that. Uh, GPA really does not matter. I haven't had a single time where my GPA uh, has mattered. There hasn't been an employer that's asked me what my GPA was or uh, an internship or anything like that. There are exceptions though, of course, there, you know, if you're trying to go to graduate school, trying to get into a really competitive program, then it's gonna matter. Carissa Lee, uh, congrats. Thank you, Carissa, I appreciate that. Daniel Christopher, favorite TV show or movie? I think it changes over time, um, but uh, I'd say my favorite TV show, like for a drama, it would be Breaking Bad, and my favorite movie, um, oh, and my, and my favorite comedy is The Office. I love The Office. And then for uh, favorite movie, oh man, that's tough. I, I don't think I have a favorite movie. I can't think of a favorite movie right now. Zax asks, you know how you say management is a very broad degree and it's too general and that's why it can be difficult to find a job. Well, what if my university makes me specialize from second year? I'm thinking of management and international business economics. How's that? Does it have good job prospects. So I realize that I, I can kind of confuse people sometimes when I use those words interchangeably. So uh, sometimes it's best to get a degree where you can go into a lot of different areas and specifically business degrees are great in that regard because of the fact that they pair so well with other degrees and they're just extremely useful when it comes to getting a job, right? The skills you learn with a business degree are very, very useful, okay? And that's why you see business degrees uh, doing really well when it comes to the statistics and getting jobs and you know wealth, et cetera. But with that being said, the downside of getting a business degree in many cases is that they're too general. So it is kind of a double-sided coin, right? So sometimes you might get a degree where it's just super specific, okay? Extremely specific. And that degree, if you got it, it's pretty much only is going to help you with jobs in that particular career path, okay? So an example of a very specific degree would be a lot of different health-related degrees, you know, nursing, et cetera. If you get a nursing degree, you're gonna become a nurse. If you got a nursing degree and then you decided, you know what, I want to uh, work as a finance manager, that would be a little bit tough for you to do. Whereas if you got a general business degree, you could get into a lot of different career paths. You could probably end up becoming a finance manager. Now, of course, you'd have to do your research on that and and uh, do a lot of other things that I can't talk about in this video, but basically there is downsides and upsides to something being uh, broad versus something being specific. Sometimes you're gonna be pigeonholing yourself by getting a degree that's too specific, but sometimes uh, depending on what career path you wanna go down, that can be a good idea as well. And in terms of your questions about a management degree, if you specialize in that, um, again, it can be a really good idea. Uh, just make sure that you focus on, especially with a business degree, focus on skills, networking, and internships slash work experience. You focus on those three things, you'll be good to go with a business degree. James asks, have you always been so financially literate? How did you get to that point? Definitely not. No, absolutely not. You're not born with it. Uh, it just takes practice. So watching videos like this, learning these sorts of things, and then implementing them and just practicing in real life. Andres asks, what are your sources of income? Um, YouTube, business, and um, you know my, my job, of course. And like I said before, I'll probably get uh, into that in more detail in the future. Anti-communist says, uh, is it possible to become an extraordinary person like Elon Musk only by reading books like he did or uh, when he was young? Or do I still need to attend college to get knowledge? Oof, that is a, that is a good question. So when it comes to somebody like Elon Musk, um, he is a absolute freak, okay? So 
When you look at somebody like LeBron James, it's very obvious that they're a genetic freak. You know, he's like 6'9", 260 pounds of pure muscle. He can run like super fast while also being incredibly huge and bulky. He's got like fast twitch muscle. And then on top of all that, he's got like a photographic memory and he's super smart, okay? So when you see someone like LeBron James, it's very easy that he is a genetic freak, okay? With someone like Elon Musk, it's not as obvious, but I would say he's just as much of a freak when it comes to your brain. So most people are not able to learn things as fast as he does. Most people are not able to be extremely skilled in so many different uh, areas, right? He, he He's basically somebody who can master an area in just a few days or a few weeks because of how smart he is, right? So realistically speaking, uh, for most people, it's not possible to be like Elon Musk. You know, I, I'm never gonna tell you, you can't be like Elon Musk. You, you, you know, if you think you can do it, that that's awesome. I think it's a little bit unhealthy to try to compare yourself to people like that who are just absolute freaks who work like 120 hours a week. They're super smart. They're just in, incredibly driven, etc. For me and for the normal person, I want to work hard and also play hard. Okay, so that's just me. I, I want to work hard, but I also want to have work-life balance and enjoy my life. And in, uh, in terms of the question of do you still need to attend college to get knowledge? So this is another one that I get a lot. You know, people use the example of Elon Musk, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates like dropped out of college and stuff like that. You have to realize that that is the outlier example. That is that is like an, a total. They are total outliers. Most people who are successful, most people who are millionaires, the and by that I mean greater than fifty percent of them did attend college. Okay, so for most people, it is a good idea to attend college. I would say you need to make sure uh, that you get the correct degree. Uh, and make sure that you do the right things to get the most out of it. College is becoming less valuable. I think there's other ways to learn these skills outside of college. And then, you know, don't discount something like getting into trade careers. That can be a great idea as well. Starting your own business. I think that's great um, as well, you know, to, to get into something like that if you want to become an entrepreneur. You definitely don't need to attend college to get some types of knowledge. And I'd say it's actually counterproductive in many cases. So if you're trying to get into something artistic, for instance, a lot of the time going to college is actually going to stop you from uh, being able to do it professionally because you're gonna be so far in debt. And I think you would be better off in many cases by just uh, practicing whatever your art is for four years uh, rather than going to college and trying to learn it. Oh man, this video is going on for really long. Okay, so the King of Kings, how do you invest, gain passive money in a poor and unstable economy? That is a super tough question to answer. I am gonna be talking more about investing uh, later on, but you know, it seems like technology stocks are doing extremely well. Um, in, in my opinion, I like uh, index fund investing. I think index funds are great. And uh, I have been looking into, uh, I've been critical about this in the past, but I have been looking into uh, cryptocurrency as well. So um, that it might be something that I talk about on this channel soon. Mr. Peep, what makes a degree unemployable? Well, that's what my whole channel is about. You just have to watch my whole channel. Uh, check out the 10 college degree uh, red flags to watch out for. Oliver A. Abarakes, uh, what is the most important job in the world? Ooh, man, that is a tough question. Uh, off the top of my head, I would say teachers, um, scientists, and entrepreneurs. Those are the three most important jobs. I mean, but that's just my opinion and that's just off the top of my head. Teachers, because they're uh, teaching uh, people uh, that are going to uh, you know, build our future. Uh, scientists, because they discover things that are amazing and I don't think scientists or teachers for that matter uh, get enough credit for what they do. I think they're amazing. And then entrepreneurs, because they innovate and they solve problems uh, on the society as a whole. So I would say those three careers are the most important if I just had to come up with something off the top of my head. James asks, what traditional businesses are most lucrative? Um, oh man, uh, it really depends on what you mean by traditional businesses, James. I, I don't know exactly what you mean by that. Um, a lot of uh, trade careers, uh, if that's what you mean by traditional businesses, are really lucrative. Um, especially if you start your own business, 
um, not work by, uh, on you know for someone else but start your own business they can be really good Safa says congratulations thank you Safa I appreciate that Andre says uh, most profitable business even in a recession it seems like technology related businesses are doing extremely well even in a recession so I would say something along you know something in technology entertainment seems to be doing really well as uh, as well especially in this particular recession um, so like my channel did really well this year for instance I don't know if it would have done this well in a different year I don't know I exist TLDR do you agree with the idea that someone is most successful when they own their own business and not have a regular nine-to-five job I think I already answered this one um, I, yeah I think I already answered this one but uh, no absolutely no you uh, define your own version of success everybody's version of success is going to be different and uh, you know for some people it's going to be starting your own business becoming an entrepreneur for some people it might be being a freelancer and making 25,000 a year uh, and being a minimalist okay that might be your version of success okay so uh, don't let anybody else define your version of success do you agree that colleges are horrible at teaching entrepreneurship and therefore it's best to skip college and start a business on your own when it comes to entrepreneurship uh, a lot of people do end up going to college and then they become entrepreneurs later on after they've gotten specific knowledge industry experience and they've learned skills right uh, with that being said the only way to learn how to be an entrepreneur is to start a business okay so a lot of the skills that you need in order to become an entrepreneur uh, cannot be taught there's a really good saying I like any skill can be learned but not every skill can be taught so uh, when it comes to starting a business the best thing to do is to just start the business and start learning it's like riding a bike the only way to learn how to ride a bike is to get on the bike and, and try to ride it yd96 overrated careers you know I've done tons of research on different careers I always read forums and like all kinds of different things when I'm researching and I would have to say the one that got the the least um, positive reviews the one that's people absolutely hate with a passion I would say that has to be lawyer uh, that one seems to be extremely overrated I mean I have never seen people so passionate about telling other people to not go into the career every career you see is going to have negative people that say for this this and this reason you should not go into the career some more than others but man a lot of people say that you should not become a lawyer so I mean I don't know uh, obviously it can be work out really great for some people but uh you know for others not so much all right guys uh thank you so much this video went on a lot longer than i thought it would i apologize for that um but i i tried to get through most of the questions um and uh, i think there were still some that i wasn't able to get to but uh yeah uh thank you guys again so much for 100,000 subscribers i really appreciate it um and uh, i will continue making really good content that you guys like and i plan on making it even better especially this year i'm upgrading the set trying to make my content as good as possible um, and just improve it in many different ways so thank you so much again and uh, i will catch you guys later